eight layers of denim. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today, instead of remaking clothes, I'm going to show you a tool that you can use to remake your clothes. I was requested to um, try out this particular sewing machine and I said yes because I'm trying to put together a video of four different options that you have. If you only have $50, what can you sew with? So this is one of them. Yes, I got it for $50. Most places have it for in the 70s and above. The unique thing about it is that it does have different stitches. So if you know anything about mini sewing machines, you know that most of them only have one stitch and they can't even backstitch. So with this one, you can backstitch and you have the option of zigzag stitch and some other stitches. So I am going to unbox this for you and I'm gonna try it out. It's not gonna be a like full, full review. You'll see that in a later video, but this is going to be the unboxing and first use. Let's open this baby up. So right out of the box, first thing you see is the instruction manual. And I think that's amazing. Some sewing machines, um, especially more expensive ones, are starting to only come with online instructions. I always keep my instructions just in case I don't feel like looking it up online. So I like that they have the um, actual paper manual here. <laughs> On the side, it comes with some spools of thread and two bobbins to match. It also comes with a needle threader and a buttonhole foot. So, does this do buttonholes? We're gonna find out. This is the sewing machine. As far as weight, it's very lightweight, which, you know, we could have predicted. But, um, you know, it has a little bit of a weight to it, you know, to let me know that it does a little bit more than just a straight stitch. So it's really cute, white and purple. It comes with a power charger that you can plug it up. You don't have to use batteries. And then it also has the foot pedal. I always wish that the foot pedal would have a nice long cord so that I could put it behind the table and bring it up towards me, but no such luck. Let's play around with this thing. So right here on the side, I'm seeing a little drawer and it has a little space under here so that you can do uh, cuffs and it already has a piece of fabric in it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on before I read any instructions just to see how easy this thing is to use and if it actually operates. I am ready to try this thing out. Just a quick tip before you plug it in, please make sure that this little button right here, it has a feature just like the other uh, mini sewing machine that I reviewed where you can actually sew without the foot pedal. And so you would just have this on low or high and you know, you would do it on and off. That's not a feature that I'm used to using. So I probably would never use it, but before you actually plug it up at any point, make sure the button is all the way pushed to off and not at least even a little bit pushed over because once you plug it up, it'll start on you. I have the foot pedal here. Make sure that your thread is pulled back a little bit. You don't want it like real short. It will pull out of the needle on you. So, and we're gonna, yep, make sure that this is all the way up. Put the foot up and I'm using my own scissors. This one didn't come with scissors. It came with the fewest um, amount of things, but it does have a thread cutter on the side. So, oh, and it has a light. Let's turn, ooh, a light, let there be. Pretty good stitches there, right? And hey, if you haven't subscribed and you're enjoying this content, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. And I just wanna say thank you so much to those of you that I'm seeing that you're sharing my channel with your family members with your friends. I have so many people joining the Facebook group that say, oh, my mom told me about this or my daughter told me about it. My cousin told me about it. So thank you guys. I'm sending you guys big hearts, big love uh, through the camera right now. You can see that in order to thread, you would just go from the thread over there through this part right here, down to this part right above the needle and then into the needle. And you can see the bobbin right there. It does use metal bobbins and you load it just like a regular sewing machine. So I would call this a light duty sewing machine. And it's a great price. And you can also wind your bobbins. You will put the bobbin right here, engage it, and then it would go, the thread would go from here over to here and back over to here through the bobbin, 
and press the foot and the bobbin and wind. All right, so let's talk about these stitches because they're pretty interesting. So since this sewing machine doesn't have a stitch length dial and a stitch width dial, it puts all the dials for you. So it only has a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch, but the numbers coordinate with how you want that stitch to be. So for instance, number one would be just a straight stitch. Number two would be a little bit of a wider straight stitch. Number three would be an even wider length. Your stitch length would be greater on that straight stitch. Then you get to four and if you want that straight stitch to be off center like for a zipper then you would choose number four number five and number six are you know kind of like those overlock stitches that you put on the edge of something if you want to finish that edge they're not going to be super close together but it definitely is better than nothing um, number seven is part of your buttonhole stitch so this is a four step buttonhole and they have two different buttons for each side so this seven is for the sides of the buttonhole and number eight is for the top and the bottom of the buttonhole. And I'll show you how um, you can do those in a second. Number nine is for a tight zigzag stitch. Number 10 is for a looser zigzag stitch and they get even looser and looser, 11 and 12. So those are your stitches. It's just straight stitch and zigzag stitch, but it's just for what you want to do with the stitches. And then you can back stitch, of course, right here. And in order to engage that, you do have to press that all the way down. Let's see if we can make a buttonhole with this. I am used to doing manual buttonholes um, and this, the way that this machine does them is pretty much how I used to do my manual ones. And the reason I know how to do manual ones is because I used to be scared like of doing the one step because I didn't know all of what to do. And so it would mess up every time. So I just gave up and I learned how to do manual ones. So we're gonna try and see if we can get the manual to work. And so the first thing you would do is you would do the top end. See, we're on number eight and we're doing the very top of our buttonhole. All right, now we're gonna switch it to seven and we're gonna do one side length of the buttonhole. Now we're gonna switch it back to eight again and we're gonna do the other end. Now we're gonna switch it back to seven and we're going to engage our back stitch. And for this, you probably, I'm gonna put it down here so I can engage it with my knees instead of my foot because I want to hold this. See if we could do it straight and we go backward. That wasn't straight at all. I didn't make sure I was on the other side. So we're going to, I'm just gonna lift it up and move it over a little bit. And we'll try again. All right, you guys wanna see my very first buttonhole? That's what it's looking like. Oh gosh. So this would definitely take some practice. And one thing is, is that this zigzag for the buttonhole is not very close at all. So if you're looking for a tight zigzag this is not going to give it to you um so when you read on the reviews or details of it and they tell you it can do a buttonhole if this is fine for you then yes but if you're looking for a tight zigzag um i don't think this is gonna give it to you and you have to do four steps which i you know it's not the end of the world for me it's just a technique that you have to learn and you have to practice it but the tightness of the zigzag. Now you could go over it a couple of times and that would definitely help. That would definitely kind of offset the fact that it's not very close. So let's give it a strength test. I always like to see if something can sew through at least two layers of denim and if the seam is strong. So we are going to pick, I think number one, yes, it's the tightest seam. And we're gonna sew this piece of denim together. Oh, oh, I wanted to like that part. It's not very sharp, but it's nice to have it there. This is the seam. It's really nice on the front. The back isn't perfect, but it's decent. Opening it up, 
you can see the zing, but it's pretty strong. So I can't complain about that. And I always try and test that because, um, like I said in the last video, when you're doing denim, especially if you're doing a sewing machine like that, nine times out of 10, you, if you're not sewing from scratch and you're upcycling, you're going to want to like take in some jeans, take in a dress, make something fitted. And anytime you're making something fitted, you want that seam down the side of your body, especially when it comes to your hips and your thighs, you want that to be a strong same I mean I don't want to be busting out in public so I don't think you want to either so that's one thing that is a big test for me on something like this um, is are those seams gonna hold up and I think that this one holds up pretty well so I'm happy with that let's test it on layers this is currently four layers of denim okay so the seam actually looks better on four layers of denim versus two that's interesting. It's this one right here. Let's take that apart and try six. Maybe not. This same ain't just tearing apart now. That's good. I want to say that this thread that they're using is actually a thicker thread. It's not like a regular. So if you're doing denim projects, at least you know you can get a little bit of a thicker thread. Okay, so it does go under. Let's try it. Six layers of denim. Ooh, now I can't tell the front from the back. That. It's always a plus. They both look good. Let's try eight. You can barely see it, but it's going down. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm gonna stop right there. It may even do 10. Um, I was The eight layers was having a little bit of trouble getting underneath, but I'm impressed. All right, so here are my final thoughts. For the price, I think that this is a good deal. If I were buying a sewing machine for my personal self, no, I wouldn't go with anything like this. But when my daughter first started to sew, I wish I had known about something like this versus the little kit when she had because you can at least have an option to start learning how to do a buttonhole and um, to learn how to thread it the way a regular sewing machine is threaded. So I like that. Um, and you know, it has a lot of the features. You have the thread cutter on the side, you have the bobbin down underneath, definitely. You know, you want to get used to that. So I definitely think that this is a good learning sewing machine. Now, if we can get back to the point where people can get decent sewing machines for a hundred bucks um, or a little bit over a hundred bucks, then I'll be happy when that happens. But until then, and if you are strapped for cash, yes, you can absolutely get this to get yourself learning how to sew and get those first upcycle projects done. So it is Angelina approved and I have the link in the description box below. You can definitely look for others that have a similar um, style read the reviews not just all the positive ones the negative ones and balance them out and um, if you want more reviews I definitely have more reviews over here for you and if you want to see the whole review for four options under $50 that is coming out very soon so definitely subscribe so you don't miss that and I will see you guys in the next one bye